Hey guys, welcome to the fourth installment of the Zygreen Car Talk. Today we're going to focus on actually a topic that's more relevant for Matt. Because yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. he owns a Fiesta ST and um, he's done a few videos on my channel in the past few years about the Fiesta ST and the ownership experience and autocrossing and tracking it. Yep. Um, and it's a pretty popular car and it's pretty easy to get into for beginners. So we want to talk a little bit about that and his experience with that and then also go into what his next potential car might be. <laughs> what it could be, I don't could know. Could be. Yeah. And then we're also going to talk about the overall idea of built versus bought as far as project cars, track cars go. Yeah, and then I think, you know, just to, you know, kind of reiterate what you're saying, like built versus bought, like, you know, buying something that is pretty much almost track ready or, you know, going to the route of buying something that's, you know, stock and cheaper, mm -hmm. but then building it up to a level to where those more expensive track car, uh, track ready cars are. Right. So that's kind of, you know, we were kind of just pinging online. It's like, hey, this would be kind of interesting to bring about. And yeah, let's go get, let's go ahead and get started here. So um, I'll probably just take it away real quickly yeah. talk about the ownership experience of a Fiesta ST. Um, first of all, I, I you know, obviously because I own it, I'm going to say this, but I think for a brand new car that you can buy, mm -hmm. Um, it's one of the best deals in terms of overall practicality and overall trackability. And That's hot hatches fun. in general, but especially the Fiesta because like you got yours for. Out it was the door. like it was like twenty something out the door, like yeah. low twenty, like twenty one out the door. I'll just say it doesn't matter, uh, and like. You know, like brand new at that price. I can't really think of any cars that are. And I just took it straight to the track. I didn't do anything to it. Yeah. Stock everything. And I had a good time. And I don't know if there's anything brand new for 20, low 20s. That's that literally the get. price of like a Civic with a couple of options on it. Yeah. But like a Fiesta ST is like actually a pretty legit, like fun hot hatch. Yeah. And it was holding its own. I mean, the only thing that I've had done to it is like upgraded the brake pads and then. Uh, did a pedal spacer for easier, you know, pedal action or whatever. Yeah. So very capable and all he needs is tires. And I was like, hey, you know what? Um, it's been a great car. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, but now it's kind of, I've had it for, I got it in 2016. So it's going to, on the third year, next year is going to be the warranty is going to come up. <laughs> so I'm like, hmm, yeah. what should I do? I'm getting to the, to the point where I'm uh, at the point where I should be upgrading it, you know, but if I go over that, you know, line to where that I really start. Slippery slope. Yeah, that slippery yeah. slope in, of investing into the car, it gets, it really adds up. And so yeah. I kind of brought upon this whole built versus bought conversation. And um, yeah, so uh, Fenton and I were having a conversation just chatting away. And I asked him, hey, you know, like, you know, if I were to just, you know, sell the Fiesta for, oh my gosh, not that much because the depreciation <laughs> yeah. is kind of crazy. And then, you know, uh, go to something like a Civic Type R, which is the extreme for me, you know, in terms of budget in terms or whatever. Of budget, yeah. Um, you know, like, like, how would that be, you know? And you've driven a seat here on yeah. track, you know, yourself, and you've had a lot of great things to say about it. Yep. So it's just like, huh. It's one know? of those many conversations that we have when we're just like messing around at work and like searching Craigslist and like stroking the invisible beard. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it is a really interesting topic because, uh, like you said, like you've had the Fiesta for a while and you're at, you're at the point as uh, as a driver where like you're getting closer to what the Fiesta can do now. But because you're getting closer to that limit, you're also reaching some of those pain points with the stock setup. Sure. Yeah. And we yeah. can go into that. But like, for example, the cooling's not that great. I mean, it should be fine for the most part if you're driving at like moderate temperature. But, um, you know, in the summertime, you're probably not going to want to track it without cooling mods. Number two you know, the, um, the lack of an LSD, for example. Yeah. Um, and you know, you, the list goes on. It is not that powerful of a car, et cetera, et cetera. It needs suspension brakes, all that stuff, all of which pretty much the civic type R already has minus the cooling. Yeah. But once you take care of the cooling from my experience, the civic type R is pretty beastly in stock form. Yeah. So like hearing all the great things you said about, I was like, Oh man, you know, like in my mind before I even thought about this and this is all just for fun. I know it's like, yeah, going from the, like the CTR is obviously better. Let's get that out of the yeah, way first. It costs of all. twice as much. Practically. Yeah, it's it's definitely better, but it's just like hmm, okay, like if I start investing money into it, we all have this conversation, or at least in our minds, thinking about hey, if I'm starting to mod my car, you know, if you do it a year, if you like check a year later and you add up everything you you spent, you're like, oh man, what could have I bought in place of right, all right, the money right. I spent 
on top of the original price of the right. car. So I was going through that in my mind. It's like, man, CTR, okay. Like it's like 35, if you're lucky, used. Uh, yeah, used. Used. Keyword used. Otherwise, yeah. you're going to pay markup probably. Yeah, so. which I mean, after taxes, is around 40, right? So like if it's a 20 into the car, that means I could spend like 20 into to the, the Fiesta. Fiesta and... I could probably get something very capable. I don't know if it'd be better. I mean, this is all just, you know, fictitious conversation, yeah. but it's fun to think yeah. about. So, yeah. And I think with the, um, the civic type R, just going back to that car for a second, cause I did track it at Laguna Seca, um, ran a 146 with like, like literally not even trying. And it was like my <laughs> third crazy. lap, you know, like I'm sure I could have done a probably a 144 if I had more time with it, but like literally all that car needs is tires and, brake pads and uh cooling so like an upgraded radiator and um potential potentially an oil cooler and one of my good friends dave um that's what he did to his car he had oh, socket bomb garage here in norcal okay do some of the cooling mods and then he the the stock wheels are 20 inch which is pretty crazy yeah um, actually, not well. yeah so very thin sidewall so he actually downgraded to some 18 inch volks and then went wider on the tires and the car handles great uh you don't really need coilovers per se so like if you're really doing the math on it, let's say you can get a used one for, let's just say forty out the door including tax. Okay, sure. And then you drop another, I don't know the exact numbers. Let's say like two grand in cooling, and then you know, well let's not even count the tires and pads because that's you got to do that to every track car. So right, let's, right, let's right, call yeah. it like forty two to forty three grand. Right. For like a car that you can drive to the track in pure comfort in comfort mode switch it over to that you know plus r mode and then just like <laughs> run 144s all day at laguna reliably that's pretty hard to beat with the fiesta and this obviously goes into the built versus bought discussion is you, let's say you spent 21 grand i mean nowadays you can spend even less than that but let's just yeah, yeah, yeah. use the new price 21 grand 21 grand out the door what do you what can you actually do to it for sure. 20 grand if you were to actually try to spend that much money on it yeah yeah I mean, but by the time you're done spending 20 grand, the car is not even going to be a Fiesta anymore. Like it's <laughs> yeah, going to be like true. an all that's out true. monster, like super undaily drivable track car and all that stuff. So it kind of goes into the topic of built versus bought because um, with a with a bought car, like you, when you buy a car that the, that the manufacturer tunes from the factory to be as cohesive of a package as mm. possible for track driving or just spirited driving you're probably never going to get that with a built car no matter how much sure, money okay. you put into it you like you don't have the capacity to do what the manufacturer did in oh, the factory you might be able point. to achieve yeah. the same lap times or even faster with crazy mods but it's going to be just a headache a headache to drive on the street um it's going to have crazy you know uh turbo lag or like just things like that right the list goes on right right so it kind of depends on your priorities if you're buying a car just to wrench on it and it's like a second or third car and it's like just a project car you want to learn from wrenching on it and like see what mods make what difference and lap times and all that stuff then yeah a built car is a great way to get into that but like if you just want to focus let's say more on the driving and keep the other variables out of it and have a car that you can also daily drive especially if it's your only car then bought for me is by far the way to go. Right. No, no, those are really good points. And that's kind of like jumping already into the built versus bought uh, conversation. Uh, but going back to like what I would do personally with my Fiesta, like you said, there's kind of a lot it needs. So I bought it stock and it does. Okay. First of all, it doesn't have the Ricardo seats cause I didn't fit in them. <laughs> so uh, that being said, like it needs a seat, yeah. right? That's really important. Uh, I'm looking into getting a big brake kit on it. Mm -hmm. um, really not looking for like tuning or anything, like adding more power until I get more proper cooling. So we're talking seat, big brake kit, um, you know, LSD, of course, which is, I mean, that's something like I don't feel comfortable installing myself, you know, so I'd have to pay someone to install right, that. Right. Um, then also there's the talk about, um, you know, oil, 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 oil cooling cooler, and yeah. then also a bigger radiator. Yeah. So that's already kind of adding up. But like in my mind, that's nowhere near the additional cost for a CTR. So no, it's, it's like, not. you know, uh, 
you know, a question that I had on you and I were just mulling it over, just having fun and talking about it. But it's something that was like, okay, yeah, like built versus bought, you know, like what are the pros and cons behind that? And yeah. um, I, I, you've even built up your own S2K, right? I mean, yeah. but that's like you said, your second car. There's so. no way I would have built that car the way I did if I was, if it was my only car. Right. In fact, I wouldn't even have an S2000 if it was my only car. (laughs) Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. So yeah. Um, that being said, let's just jump into the built versus bought conversation and some of the pros and the cons. Um, you already touched on the fact that like, if you have a built car, you're not going to get that, uh, mindset from the manufacturers that these big companies have to make it like overall comfortable and performance, uh, focus. And, um, I guess, you know, taking everything into account. Whereas like if you do something built, it's just like, I just want it to be awesome on the track or on on on, on the autocross course. Or so, a drag strip or whatever, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think that's kind of one of the biggest cons of built is that it's it's hard to make it comfortable. So like in my mind my for my Fiesta, I'm like, once I take out that seat, it's going to be like not as comfortable as a daily driver, yeah. you know? And so... Um, I don't know if you have any comments on that part. Yeah, I do. So going a little bit more in detail of specifically the Fiesta and the Civic Type R, I just want to comment a little bit on the way that they drive to to me, because I've you know I've ridden in your car a lot, <clears throat> yeah, um, at Thunder Hill East, um, and then I drove it at the autocross, um, and then the Civic Type R, I reviewed it on both the street in the canyons and on Laguna Seca. So I, I feel like I have a pretty good idea sure, of how yeah. they drive, especially stock. Um, the Fiesta for twenty for twenty grand is like one of the most fun front wheel drive cars you can buy. Period. Because sure, it's only two hundred horsepower, but it's only twenty seven hundred pounds. That is by far the lightest hot hatch on sale right now. Um, <laughs> yeah, by far. The Civic Type R I think is like three thousand thirty one hundred, and that's a, that's the lightest car in its class. Yet the Fiesta is still like somewhere around four hundred pounds lighter, which is a lot. And one of the handling characteristics that I really like about it um, is that, like, when you lift off the throttle mid-corner, or if you just chuck it into a corner, um, the back end will actually step out. It's it rotates so eagerly in in its Mm. stock setup, which you don't get from like your GTIs or um, what have you of the world. So I love that about it. The Civic Type R, on the other hand. Um, it just feels like it's a much, it's a much more serious car. Like it handles in a much more like kind of neutral, maybe a Mm. little bit less playful, but it's just, it grips, 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 grips. Uh, And then when you put your foot down, the LSD hooks up, you don't get even get any torque steer in your car. There is more torque (laughs) steer, even though it's a much smaller engine with less torque, but the Fiesta is more kind of like fun, just toss it around without carrying the civic type R is like, you really want to chase those lap times. Um, so that's kind of what I feel about that. And I think this, if we were talking lap times, for example, stock versus stock, I think the Fiesta ST, let's say with, you know, 200 treadwear tires versus the Civic with 200 treadwear tires. I feel like at Laguna Seca, for example, the Civic could probably do like a 142 with a pro driver. Sure. Sure. Whereas the Fiesta, probably you're talking like 150. Yeah. Low 150s. I think Randy hopes did like oh, a did 150 one or two or something one or two yeah probably in the low 150 range so you're talking like a eight to second gap 10 second gap which is massive <laughs> that's quite if a you bit you're gonna try to make that up with a budget of 20 grand you probably could but man i'm telling you the car would like not even feel point. streetable at all at that point you're gonna get a ton of turbo like to, like to, in order to get the power level that you want mm. out of it to run that kind of a time out of a little 1.6 liter, it's going to be so boosted and <laughs> yeah. you're going to put your foot down and nothing's going to happen until like, you know, the boost kicks in. But um, so, yeah, that just goes more into the point of like, it really depends on what you want. Like if your Fiesta is your only car and your daily driver, I would not. That's a good point. I yeah. would not mod it to that extent. But if on the other hand, if you don't care about how fast it is, you don't necessarily need it to be as fast as the Civic Type R. You just want it to be like, more still streetable but just give you a better experience on track you could just do like just the mods that you mentioned right cooling a big brake kit lsd and a seat and like that's pretty much it you don't have to go super hard suspension full roll cage and all that stuff yeah definitely all the power mods yeah and i think that's kind of the mindset that i have right now and kind of one of the more of the pros for building or having a built car is that 
there, there's no real replacement for, um, you know, getting a car, getting good at that current setup, and mm-hmm. then slowly, you know, adding things to it and really, really feeling what it what it's actually doing to your car. Yeah. Whereas opposed to a bought car, you're you have the beast ready to go, and it in, in any capable hands, it could do you know really fast times. But you don't really know what all those components are doing for you as a driver. You just know that it works. You just know that it works and you're trying to figure it out. Whereas like in a built car where there's room to grow, you know, like that's, you know, a little cheaper and you put expensive mods into it, you see, oh, okay, this is what my suspension upgrade is doing. Or, okay, this is what a seat does. Like this is, you know, I'm feeling the road better. Or like, hey, you know, big brake kit, which Mm -hmm. that's kind of what I'm focusing on next. Like, hey, I'm giving better, more even brake fade throughout instead of just losing it all at the end. So yeah. that's kind of like one of the biggest pros, I think, for built, other than it being cheaper, obviously. Yeah. Well, actually, and that's also- Potentially you can, cheaper. Potentially cheaper, yeah. Once you get past cheaper. a certain point and you mod it so extremely that like all these certain things start popping up like issues, then you can spend a lot of time and money trying to fix all those things. Yeah. But beside, that, that being beside the point, I, I agree with, with what you just said. and. Also, I think it, that that's another aspect where it depends on what you want. Because if you're someone who is like more engineering focused, like you, you're curious about how things work, then obviously like building it step by step and feeling the difference that each step makes is probably going to be more like satisfy your like intellectual curiosity. Yeah, sure. Whereas sure. if you're just trying to become the best driver, in my opinion, mm. have a car where like everything is reliable and like it just works and keep all those variables out of it and just do lap after lap after lap seat time. That's, I think, in my opinion, that's the best way to become a better driver instead of, you know, constantly putting new parts in your car and then re- having to relearn how to drive it mm. like every other week. That can definitely take some of that experience away. Yeah, you know, that that, that is a good point because... The, especially I, I really it, it really resonates me with the reliability of a car yeah because like if you're on the track and you have to worry about like oh man i have this leak that i know about and i have to like clean it up every time after i go out mm-hmm. you don't deal with that in bot cars normally normally like, i would as, say 99 percent of the time you know at least when they're like pretty new yeah, yeah exactly so that's a great point like but I, it's very curious your take on like you think it uh you can become a better driver if you just take all those factors out and just buy a car that's like ready to go and yeah. just get a good at that. I think so. Yeah. I think people would maybe, it'd be interesting to hear your comments like, yeah. hey, like does a built car make you a better driver or does a bought car that's ready to go and learning in that make you a better driver? I, I feel that like be really as a beginner, I think so I will okay. put yeah. a little caveat little. on that. As a beginner, it's better to have a car that just works. Mm. because you're like are you're already focusing on just the basics of how to drive a car like if you can't even heel toe it doesn't matter if you got an extra 500 horsepower right 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 um whereas if you're already a pretty good driver and you're like and you can very accurately precisely hone in on what the weaknesses of the car that you're driving has like say like oh you're driving a a stock s2000 you're running 148s at Laguna, you're fast as hell, right? Sure, yeah, yeah. And then you're like, you know what? I I, I'm, I, I feel I, I can drive this car at the limit, but the suspension isn't where I want it to be. There's too much body roll. Then you can look into coilovers and anti-roll bars and get that honed in where you want it, set it exactly where you want, corner balance, all that stuff, and then you can really enjoy the benefits of that and become a better drive, an even better driver. Mm. But if you're like a newbie, you've done like no track days and you hop into a stock S2000, you're not even going to get to 70% of its limit. Okay. So yeah, fair adding coilovers is not going to do a damn thing for you. So, got it. Got it. Yeah. So I feel like for beginners, I think that's where I meant like bot is probably a better way to go. No, yeah. That, if you I, care about driving. Yeah, that's definitely an interesting take. And it'd be curious to hear what you guys think in the comments, you know? And yeah, uh, yeah like I think. Uh, there's always like this mentality too around being built like, Oh yeah, I I wrench on it. And you know, by all means, like you definitely, if you have that knowledge, you know, you have some credibility in terms of saying, yeah, yeah. I I know all how all this stuff works. But then at the end of the day, sometimes it's like, yeah, you know, all that stuff, but your car's like breaking down, you know, like, (laughs) you know, as opposed to the bot guys, they're on the track the entire time. Yeah. But anything can happen on a track though. Yeah, Yeah. 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 So cool. I think that kind of, 
yeah. you know, sums it up. You know, we really want to get that engagement in the comments to let us know, you know, built versus bought. Um, if you have any questions about the Fiesta, let me know. I can, you know, answer those. But um, yeah, I think that's kind of what we wanted to cover for this one. So yeah, yeah. I think it, personally, it's a really interesting topic. And I would love to hear what you guys think. I gave my two cents on it. And I very like much feel the way, you know, that way about what I said. But I'm open to like, have seeing other points of sure view and um, having my mind change, I guess, and hearing your experiences, like, especially with the built side of it, um, especially as a beginner, like, were you able to, are there any beginners out there that were able to build a car up and learn driving, how to drive on it and become really fast in a short amount of time? I'm curious if there are people out there like that. Cool. Um, so I think that wraps it up. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll see you guys on the fifth episode.